Hi everyone, this is Mike Kramer of Mock Capital uh, with a weekly check-in. Today is Monday, July 17th, and it's around uh, 6.30 New York time. So tomorrow we'll be getting retail sales. Um, estimates are for uh, retail sales to rise by 0.5% month over month. That would be higher than last month's reading of 0.3. X uh, sales, X um, auto up 0.3% versus last month's 0.1%. X Auto and Gas up 0.3, down from 0.4. Retail Sales Control Group up 0.3 versus last month 0.2. So overall looking for a slightly hotter retail sales in the month of June. When we look at um, some other data this week, you're going to be getting things like housing starts, uh, continuing claims, which have been uh, a really big number along with initial jobless claims. These numbers have tended to come in below expectations now for some time. So again, a lot of people are watching these numbers closely to get a sense if the labor market is showing any signs of weakening. And then, of course, we're going to get um, some of the leading index also on uh, later this week. So plenty of economic data to go around. Also this week, we're going to get earnings. Uh, most notably, we're going to start with really Wednesday morning, Goldman Sachs is reporting results. Um, and then uh, later that afternoon, you're going to get results out of Tesla and Netflix. And then uh, Thursday, you're going to see things like Johnson & Johnson and Taiwan Semi, which is, I think, a, an important one, given that the this is one of the fabricators for NVIDIA. Uh, and so you're going to want to see what Taiwan Semi says, because that could have a spillover effect into the semiconductor space overall and this recent AI frenzy that's been going on in the market. So you'll want to pay attention to things like that. Also, um, it's important we just start off with um, We'll start off with Goldman Sachs because, again, Goldman Sachs is on Wednesday, but also because Goldman Sachs is one of the largest components in the Dow. So um, Goldman's re results could have some big significance in terms of how the Dow performs. You can see Goldman overall hasn't really performed very well, hasn't really kept pace with the recent equity market rally. So a move higher in Goldman could certainly help the Dow, which has been um, uh, just basically stagnant here, unable to get through this 34,600 region. It's tested it a number of times going all the way back to November of last year. Now, uh, today, Monday, we got up to that level again, uh, 34,585. Uh, we got, you know, briefly uh, above 34,665 today, but just couldn't seem to maintain it. So, you know, Goldman could be one of those stocks that really helps to push the Dow over that final hurdle. It's interesting because while you've seen the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 really push to newer highs, the Dow has basically done nothing now for some time. And again, as we've talked about, you know, the Dow has been largely um, uh, associated with or largely, uh, you know, traded with this Australia uh, 200 index, which has been also um, highly correlated to it. And you can see that that both indexes are really not performing very well, um, just kind of status quo. And you can also overlay the DAX over that as well. And while the DAX has uh, performed better than the Dow overall, um, both indexes have basically, you know, stalled out, I would say, for the lack of a better word, since really around March. So this is sort of a, an important point for Goldman and uh, for um for the Dow because also, you know, you already had UNH report results and UNH was up 7% on Friday and it was up another 1% today and UNH is is the biggest weighting in the Dow and again, so far haven't been able to break through. You can see also that we're getting very close to this upper bound of resistance on the RSI. So, if the Dow is going to break out, um, it certainly seems like that time needs to be now. Because again, you have already have one of the largest components or the largest component report. All of that positivity is already reflected in the price. So you're going to need really Goldman uh, to potentially be the catalyst that gets the Dow over that hump that maybe allows it to climb back up to around 35,400 or uh, 35,500, about 1,000 points higher than where we are right now, which would really put it more in line with the S&P 500 because... Um, you can see the S&P 500 right now is knocking on the door of uh, 4,530, 4, and that's been the level that's also been uh, goes back and is the equivalent to where the Dow would be if it were to move higher. 
Um, the S&P today had a, a rather strange move higher today. Uh, and I say it was strange because we rallied uh, pretty sharply almost all day long. And then in the final um, basically 30 minutes of the day, we gave all of that. We gave back a big portion of those gains and then managed to also close below the highs that we saw on Friday, which came early Friday morning. And so this could be uh, a number of two things, right? I mean, obviously, if the S&P 500 gaps above these highs uh, tomorrow morning, all this negativity that we've seen, in, at least in the last hour to the half hour today, goes away, and the market could potentially continue on its upward path. Uh, and it looks like, again, with option expiration um, this Friday, uh, you know, the big the big gamma level for um, this op X appears to be around this 4,500 level. The next level is at 4550. So, if you take out, you know, if you can take out early tomorrow, this 45 and a, um, this 45, uh, call it 45, uh, 35 region. There's not much to say that the S and P 500 doesn't rally to 4550, or maybe even 4575 in the next couple of days. Um, there could even be some people taking a shot and hoping that they can get this thing up to 4600. Um, you know, but suddenly if, if tomorrow's opens down here and we open lower, you know, um, there's a case that, you know, could be said that you start looking for some of these lower gap fills. So I think, you know, tomorrow's opening is going to play a critical, a critical point um, in terms of, of where this index goes and whether or not it tries to push a little bit higher going into options expiration. Uh, when you look at the NDX, it also uh, moved higher today. It closed right at the highs, though, of um, Friday. So not quite as a negative a close as the S&P. But again, like the S&P, you really want to see these highs taken out pretty quickly. Because then after that, again, as we spoke about last week, there's really no real resistance until about 16,000 on the NASDAQ 100. Also, we've been watching the dollar weaken pretty dramatically. And this is also helping to add to a little bit of the equity market move higher because um, when the dollar weakens, it helps to ease financial conditions. And easing financial conditions can help to push uh, equity prices higher. So the dollar broke through some really key levels here uh, around this 100 to 101 level. You can see today we're trading around 99.10 or so. It broke some key uptrends in the RSI that was you know, kind of pointing towards uh, a stronger dollar uh, for some time. And that, you know, re reached oversold levels with the index going below uh, 30. Um, and you can even see that the dollar went below the lower Bollinger Band, suggesting that maybe the dollar is a little bit oversold here at these levels. Maybe we're in for a little bit of a period of a little consolidation, so to speak. Now, obviously, you get stronger retail sales. You could see the dollar lift and maybe retest the breakdown at 101 and a half. Um, but otherwise, I mean, for further downside here in the dollar, you're looking at 99.15 or so um, again. And if you look at the euro, remember last week we were talking about, or maybe two weeks ago, we were talking about a potential reversal pattern in the euro. And we were talking about if we got over this 110 region, it would invalidate it. Um, and that's pretty much what happened, right? And so when when head and shoulder patterns don't break down and they continue to they can form continuation patterns and you can see that the euro rose right to um resistance here at uh we'll call it um 112 or so um in terms of the euro where it goes from here uh again like the dollar looks a little bit overbought uh you can also see that it it also uh, got above its upper Bollinger Band. So it seems when you look at the euro, you look at the dollar, they're both telling you the DXY, they're both sort of suggesting that we might be in a little bit of a period here where we see a little bit of a retracement in both the euro and a retracement in the dollar index. And perhaps the euro comes back down and tests the 110, 111 region uh, before it makes the next move up towards this 114, 115 area. Now, what's important about the euro also is if we go back and take a look at it from a longer term perspective and we start drawing in, you know, trend lines in terms of how the euro has uh, performed historically, um, you know, you can make an argument that uh, the euro has room really to rise all the way back to 116, 117 before it really hits a long term downtrend that may pose a threat to it. Right. 
And, uh, and so that suggests that, you know, again, this next level here could be telling because if we get through 112, uh, again, it looks like you could be testing a longer term downtrend at around 116 or so. So there's a lot of things happening this week. I think there's a lot of points in time where you could be seeing some really important moments uh, in the market because, again, we have option expiration on Friday. You also have VIX OPEX on um, on uh, Wednesday. And uh, just really quickly to throw in the VIX OPEX, um, what this is looking like at least is that you have you know a lot of open interest uh, in the calls uh, all up here. And these are all due to expire worthless unless we see some sort of move higher in the VIX over the next couple of days. That may be a bit of a challenge given that you also have lots of puts which are likely to keep it, you know, suppressed. But, um, you know, you can't discount and rule out the fact that there might be a push higher in the VIX um, in the next couple of days um, to try to get some of these calls into the money and maybe take some of these puts out of the money. Um, and that would certainly, that certainly would be a pain trade. And that would be a uh, counter to what I think many people might be thinking about. But again, that's something to think about. The VIX did rise today. It has been, you know, up, um, you know, three of the last four days. Uh, the VVIX was also up today, and that's been up three days in a row. So certainly signs of implied volatility starting to pick up. It looks like for now, at least, the VIX has made a low at this point. Um, maybe it makes a lower low, but given the OPEX on, fr on Wednesday and then on Friday, it looks like maybe that may start to reverse course as we go through the rest of the week. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Hope you have a great week. Bye.